Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. Today, I'd like to set up an experiment to measure the practical accuracy of a number of different firearms. Now, normally, when a reviewer or anybody else goes to measure the accuracy of a gun, they try to measure the mechanical accuracy. And so they'll set up a bench rest or a machine rest if they have one, and they'll try to eliminate the human element to the greatest extent possible so that they can focus on just the accuracy of the gun itself without regard to who's using it. Now that's good data to have, uh, but then you've always got the guy who buys a rifle because the manufacturer promises that it's capable of shooting submitted of angle groups and takes it to the range where he can set it up on a solid bench rest with sandbags fore and aft and zeroes his scope and verifies that, yes, it is in fact capable of shooting a less than one inch group at 100 yards. So then he takes his rifle out to the field where he's big game hunting or something and he sees a game animal off 300 yards away. He knows that his gun is capable of shooting submitted of angle groups, so you know that means he should be able to put bullets consistently inside of a three inch circle at, at 300 yards, uh, which is well within the vital areas of a typical big game animal. So he throws his rifle to his shoulder in anticipation of being able to make an easy shot and then either misses entirely or doesn't even take the shot because his crosshairs are moving around so much that he can't be assured of a hit. And so there's a difference between having a rifle that is capable of shooting a submittative angle group uh, when fired from a bench rest and actually being able to shoot a group that size in the field. Now obviously shooting accurately in the field is substantially a matter of skill, but that doesn't mean that the gun itself is irrelevant. There's a lot of, shall we say, ergonomic factors like the weight and balance of the gun, the quality of the sights, the trigger pull, etc that have absolutely no effect on mechanical accuracy, but can have a very significant effect on practical accuracy. You know, if a gun is exceptionally heavy or if the balance point is exceptionally far forward, it's going to be relatively difficult to hold that gun steady in an offhand position compared to something with a more favorable uh, balance point or overall weight. You know, similarly, if the sights just aren't very good, that can be a significant limiting factor. And so, to measure the practical accuracy of a firearm, we need to reintroduce the human element into our testing. And specifically, we need to use a shooter of fairly average skill, because on the one hand, <clears throat> we don't want someone who's going to flinch and throw shots way off target or make other gross errors, uh, because then any effects of the ergonomics of the gun on practical accuracy are just going to be overwhelmed by the user error. On the other hand, we know there have been people like Herb Parsons or Jerry Misalek who've been able to take ordinary firearms and do extraordinary things with them. And so we also don't want to use someone who is so incredibly or exceptionally skilled that they're able to overcome what to a normal person would be significant ergonomic limitations. Instead, we need someone of somewhat intermediate skill. Now, fortunately, I think most of the population of Idaho would probably qualify as being in that intermediate skill level. And I'd certainly put myself in that category, so naturally, I'm going to be our shooter for this test. So the way this is going to work is that I'll set up a target at a known distance. I'll fire a 10-shot group with a given firearm uh, from an offhand position or other realistic field position, as the case may be. I'll allow myself to throw out up to one outlier if there are some clear outliers in the group, uh, getting down to potentially a nine-shot group. We'll then measure the maximum distance across that group uh, in inches, divide that by the distance to the target in hundreds of yards, and that'll give us an approximate measure of the 90% dispersion angle. Uh, 
and then the inverse of the dispersion angle gives us a measure of accuracy. Or, uh, to put it in more practical terms, we can use that to calculate the maximum distance at which we could expect to hit a target of a given size 90% of the time. And we'll repeat this test with a number of different firearms, you know, giving us an idea of the relative practical accuracy of some different types of firearms. Let's start off with a full-sized revolver. So, with the full-sized revolver, I shot about a 5-inch group at 25 yards, which would equate to about 20 minutes of angle for the 90% dispersion angle. I feel like I've shot better groups than that with this revolver, even offhand in the past, but this is what I shot today. Let's also try a little snub nose revolver. With the snub nose revolver, I moved up to a distance of 10 yards and shot about a three and a half inch group, so that gives us a dispersion angle of 35 minutes of angle. Now let's try a semi-automatic handgun. Uh, specifically, this is a Springfield XD in 45 ACP. With the auto-loading handgun, I was shooting about a four and three-quarter inch group at 25 yards, giving us a dispersion angle of about 19 minutes of angle. Now let's try a lever carbine, specifically this Marlin Model 1894, which as you can see just has basic iron sights. So with the lever carbine, I was shooting about a two and three quarter inch group at 25 yards. So that would correlate to a dispersion angle of about 11 minutes of angle. Now let's try just a basic AR-15. You know, standard profile, 16 and a half inch barrel. And in this case for sights, I've got a forward mounted non-magnifying red dot.
With the AR-15, I moved the target out to 50 yards and shot about a 5-inch group, so that gives us a 10-minute dispersion angle. And finally, let's try more of a target model AR-15. 20-inch, heavy-profile barrel, 3-9 to nine power scope, which I'm probably going to leave on 3 for shooting it offhand. So from a standing offhand position at 50 yards, I was shooting about a four and a half inch group with the scoped AR-15, uh, which gives us about nine minutes of angle for the 90% dispersion angle. Now, so far, I've done all the shooting from a standing offhand position, which is certainly the easiest position to assume in the field and thus, frankly, the most likely one to be used, but it's not necessarily the only realistic field position, and in particular, a rifle like this could probably be used more accurately from a more stable position. So, let's try shooting this from a military squat and see if we can tighten up the group a bit. Shooting the scoped AR-15 from a rice paddy prone or military squat position, I was able to shoot about a two and three quarter group at 50 yards, giving us a five and a half minute of angle dispersion angle. And for one last test, since we do have a bipod mounted on this gun, let's deploy the bipod and try shooting a group from a sitting position. Shooting the scoped AR-15 from a sitting position with the bipod deployed, I was able to shoot about a one-inch group at 50 yards, implying a two-minute of angle, uh, dispersion angle. Uh, I probably could have done better than that if my hands weren't getting cold and numb out here. Now the one final thing that we should probably do to round out the test is to try shooting the basic AR-15 with the unmagnified optic from something like a sitting position. From a sitting position, I was able to shoot about a two and three quarter inch group at 50 yards with the basic AR-15, uh, implying a 90% dispersion angle of about five and a half minutes of angle. Okay, so I have tabulated the results and calculated our effective range for each of these guns, which in this case I am defining effective range as the maximum distance at which we can expect to hit the target 90% of the time. So if we assume a six inch target, then with the snub nose revolver, our effective range is about 17 yards. 
with the full-sized revolver, it's about 30 yards. With the automatic, it was about 32 yards. With the lever-action rifle, uh, 55 yards. Uh, the standard AR-15, 60 yards. The target model 80, uh, AR-15, 67 yards. And then uh, using the target model AR-15 from the military squat position, it was 109 yards. And using the standard AR-15 from a sitting position, it was also 109 yards. While using the target model AR-15 uh, from a sitting position with the bipod deployed, the effective range was 300 yards. Now, some overall results and conclusions. Uh, to start with, I notice that the accuracy of the two full-sized handguns, both the revolver and the automatic, was about twice the accuracy of the snub-nosed revolver. Now, I've always regarded you know, super compact handguns like that snub-nosed revolver as kind of a last resort. You know, I would much prefer to carry a full-size or close to full-size handgun for EDC, if at all possible. And I think these results kind of vindicate my opinion in that regard, because uh, while I was definitely expecting an increase in accuracy moving from the snub nose revolver to a full-sized handgun, I'm not sure if I was expecting the accuracy to be double uh, what you'd get with the smaller gun. Now one thing we saw in this test that I definitely was not expecting is that the automatic was slightly more accurate than the revolver. Uh, I really was expecting that the full-sized revolver would be somewhat more accurate or deliver somewhat better practical accuracy than the automatic. Uh, and yet that's not what we saw. You know, the accuracy of the two was about the same with the automatic slightly in the lead. Now, transitioning from a handgun to a rifle just used in the offhand position roughly doubled my effective range or practical accuracy in this case, uh, which is not quite what I would have expected. You know, if you'd asked me before I had done this test at what distance I thought I could confidently hit a six inch target with a handgun versus a rifle, I probably would have said 20 to 25 yards with the handgun and about 100 yards with the rifle, implying that the rifle would be four to five times uh, you know, more accurate than the handgun. But in fact, it's only about a factor of two. You know, our calculated effective range for handguns was about 30 yards, so I'm actually shooting a little better than I thought with handguns. But then with the rifle, it's only about 60 yards, which is considerably less than 100. So that's a little bit of a humbling result, but that's a good reality check. And that's part of the value of doing these kinds of tests. As long as I was just shooting offhand, the difference in practical accuracy between the three different rifles that I used was pretty minimal. However, there was a slight difference with the lever action that had open sights being the least accurate, the standard AR-15 with the red dot being in the middle, and then the heavy barreled AR-15 with the scope being the most accurate. And that's about what I would have expected because it seems to me that the better you can see the target, the better you should be able to hit it. And you can see the target a little better through a red dot than you can through open sights. And then, of course, you can see it better through a magnified scope than you can through an unmagnified red dot. Now, that said, it's probably important to point out here that in this test, I was trying to shoot accurately. I was not necessarily trying to shoot quickly. So while a magnified scope you know, seems to provide a slight advantage in terms of practical accuracy, it might provide a disadvantage in terms of speed of target acquisition. That's something that I may have to test in a future experiment, but we'll save that for another time. Anyway, uh, transitioning from an offhand shooting position to a more stable position like crouching or sitting naturally resulted in an improvement in accuracy, not quite by a factor of two. Uh, no surprises there. 
And in a sitting position, deploying the bipod improved my accuracy by almost a factor of three. So I was definitely expecting the bipod to improve accuracy. I don't know that I was expecting that large of an improvement for what's otherwise the same shooting position. Now, just how broadly applicable are the results of this test? Well, I'm sure that if different people conducted similar tests with similar guns, they would all shoot slightly different groups and thus get slightly different numbers for the effective range or practical accuracy of each of the different guns that were tested. That said, I would expect that most shooters of intermediate skill would probably come up with a similar ranking of the different guns in terms of their practical accuracy relative to each other. Of course, the more data that we can collect, the better. So, if you've been looking for an opportunity to prove that you're a better shot than I am, well, this is your chance. You know, I would be delighted if other people in the shooting community and the uh, social media community would conduct similar tests and make videos about it, post videos about their tests, or at least share the results in the comments here on this video. Uh, so, it would be great to get some more corroborating information here. Uh, in any case, until next time, thank you for watching that Hohen Show.